Welcome back to the Clock Shop. This is Jim with J.R. Clocker on eBay. This is the beginning of part two of the Ansonia Time Only movement that we're working on. Um, this is a little bit of video from the other day. Um, the video will start in a minute. Today we'll be doing all the bushings on the bushing machine and not by hand. Uh, I really hope you enjoy the... Uh, um, this video and other videos like it, please take the opportunity to su subscribe and ring the bell uh, so you'll know when I put up a new video. We're going to be splitting pretty much 50-50 uh, in 2022 where 50% uh, of the videos will be uh, doing some kind of repair or repair tip and then we'll be doing... Uh, uh, vlogs probably once a week. I, I've been saying daily, but probably once a week on what's going on in the clock shop, what comes in, what's repaired, what's going out. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Please subscribe. So this pr first little bit, I'm just doing the one bushing on the top plate that still needed to be done. Uh, get through this really quickly, and then we'll start on doing the bushings on the back plate. Okay, you saw me do that one. I just finished up the one uh, uh, bushing on the uh, the top plate. And I have two bushings to do on the bottom plate. Right now... I am going to find the proper the proper bushings for them, and then I have uh, <clears throat> I made this is my I made pile. I made a terrible mistake and I dumped my bushing box, and now they're all mixed up. <laughs> So I made a terrible mistake. My I made box. Anyway, so I got the two bushings that I need. Um, still have to figure out uh, what cutters I need. Three and a half. It's easier for me to. And three. So that's going to be kind of important because. Uh, I'm working on the three and a half one right here now, and I have it pretty much set up in place. Um, I'll pull this out, pull it away, and uh, I, I take my three and a half out, and I lay it down here, and I go back two. Um, I might go back three on this one, but I normally only go back two. So the first one I'm putting in is my one, uh, one, um, 1 1.97. So um, it's almost two, two millimeters. And I just want to come in here and make sure I, I like, I, I'm push, putting my thumb on the shaft. If you can see it pushing in that direction just like i did with the taped hands yesterday i'm pushing in that direction to make sure that i that the um that the brooch isn't finding its easiest way through the hole okay that's basically what i do now this hole is now around it all right so i i don't actually have to put my thumb there i sometimes i do it just on, I don't know, his habit. Anyway, so, uh, okay. And one more to go, and then we'll be able to set the bushing in. You'll notice that it is a lot faster when you're not doing hand bushings, uh, but I really think everybody should do hand bushings at least for a while. I did it for four years, four years, 
every morning I taped up my hands. And, uh, well, not every morning, but a lot of mornings. Any mornings we were doing bushings, we, I did. And, um, just to show you how that worked out, the more experience I got and the better I got at doing my work, the more knowledge I had, uh, I would get a percentage of whatever the charges were. And, uh, nice, that's a nice, nice one there, okay? Then I usually take it out, all right? Anyway, I get a percentage. Um, I started at 25%. When I was done, I was at 45% of the charges. So, if they charge $100, I got 45 of it. And I pass that on um, to the apprentices that I had. I almost always go in here and open a little bit. All right, so then we're going to test. Now, here's a great... <laughs> I'm doing the bottom plate. And if you notice earlier in the video, in the part one, I said, ah, oh, put a mark. So I put a little black mark there. Now... The deal is, is that that allows me then to come through and say, okay, this is the bottom plate. This was marked on the top. So I know which end it goes in real, you know, real easy. Okay. And that's good. That's good. All right. That one's set. And we're going to set up this one. Okay. This one I'm going to come in, try to get close again and show you see here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a mark right there where they came in and hit it. Okay. Now this is the other end. It was also done on this side because I already had it marked over here for you. It was hit here as well. But the, that's what kills me is they, they actually, they actually um, took the clock apart in order to to ream it, what we call ream a butcher job. Anyway, it's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing that they do that. Anyway, let's get this set up in here. Um, by the way, when you, if you can, when you buy, uh, especially this Bergeon bushing tool, I forget the name, it's like, I don't know, somebody will correct it, 2600 or 1600, I don't know, it's, I think it's written on the bottom. Oh, wait a second here. What does it say? 6200. Okay. The Bergeon 6200. See if you can get these uh, adjustables. The ones that come with it are okay, but I really like these adjustables. Uh, they adjust the height. They they do this. You know, it's just easier to work with, with uh, your piece when you have the adjustables on there. And let me get my centering bit. Um, so, I'll leave that there right now. I am going to use that once I get this centered. This is my last bushing, so I'll put, I'll start putting stuff away. Um, except for the cham chaff, uh, chamfering bit, because I'll use that right at the end. Um, okay. Tighten that in. Let me take a peek and make sure. Yeah, it's against. It's away from. There we go. I mean, this was a little loose. This is still a little loose. Now, now it's tight. Okay. Make sure you don't want it to be loose when you're firing up stuff. You know, when you're cutting. All right, so this one was the and measure twice, cut once. It works in woodworking. This is a three millimeter. So I'm going to go to the uh, 2.97. I'm going to go back to. And uh, let me see here. Now. 
This one's not too bad, so I'm not putting a heck of a lot of pressure on here. I just want to make sure that if it thinks about drifting, it won't. Anyway, that's what I'm really looking forward to do. I'm going to start putting bits back now. And uh, this is a three. And now we are definitely round. There's no real need to do. Okay. Let me finish it up here. <laughs> uh, I need to do hand bushings more often just so I can come to realize how much I enjoy uh, having my bushing machine. And people say, oh, KWM, but, you know, one thing I like about Bergeon is they have cutters for KWM bushing. So if you can get a good deal in uh, KWM bushing, you can just uh, uh, get the cutters. And most of the major houses have them. All right, so that's in there. Now, last thing I'm going to do... Um, before I take it out, is I'm going to chamfer the the um, inside of the bushing and the inside uh, because if you notice all all these American, you can, you can see they all have a little. Oh, let me am I in? Am I focused? They're all little have a little uh, bevel there and. So we put a little, just for a little end shake. All right. I, I don't aggressively cut, and it's not hard to do. All you have to do is, I, I put hardly any progression into it. It cuts, you know, when you have good, you know, I'll get this. I have it in the center. I'll look at it. Oh, yeah, really nice, really nice. Now, I will go through and um, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> and this one was a little tight when I put it on, so I knew I was going to have to pull that out. And uh, this is my burnisher. This is my cutter. Clean a little, open it up a little bit. We'll go. I already burnished the other plate. And it just puts a nice polish on the inside. And, uh, Let's do the right one up here. This one was the one that was a little tight. Nope, it's good. All right, I'll put it back together here. I don't know, unless you want to watch. I'm going to open this up a little bit. There we go. All right, I'm going to say, let's put some of the tools aside here. Oh, and uh, the spring has made a new appearance. Uh, it looks pretty good. I will test it further in the clock. It's a time only, so it's so easy to take out. And if I really need to switch it out, I will. Um, anyway, and this is uh, actually really... There we go. Pretty simple stuff here. And... Uh, There we go, and this is that one that drives me crazy, so I'll put that over there. Put this in. Okay. 
this in. Okay, so I want to put this in in up here before I put it together. I'm going to show you a little trick. It works really good, especially with time uh, time onlys. Uh, uh, but it really does work good for anything that has this bridge uh, escapement. Okay, so this is this one. And this is this one. Okay. So this is what I do. I put it in the the pivot in the hole in the bushing. I will put take my finger and keep it pointed out. I will come in here and as I slide in these two holes and I get it down, I will let it go down here so it slides in, all right? So now I don't care what what it does for a while and uh you know time only can you know it's just really simple really easy and uh let me get my nuts here and i'll put a little turn on the nuts And that will some people use rubber bands which is actually kind of an idea that has merit um you just wrap rubber bands around down here and that applies pressure um when i'm doing a german french especially old french jappies or um gustav becker's I always use a plate se plate separators. Uh, really, really, you know, the, the big hunkers down here aren't bad, but when you start getting up to the end of the train, you know, you got to be really careful. You know, you don't want to break a pivot up there. And uh, I've done it. I'll tell you right now, I've done it. And it's not fun. I learned a long time ago. Um, whether you use rubber bands, that's fine. All right, so once I get it pretty much in here, I can go and, and and get these guys, these bad boys in. Actually, I thought this guy was in, so let me back him off a little bit because I don't want to. Uh, come on in there. There you go. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to back this one up. You see here, you could use a play separator. And then the, what people don't understand about plate separators are, let me go get one and we'll, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. This is a plate separator. Um, but you, you got to look at it this way. It's a plate separator, but it's a plate keeping it together. All right. And, and when you th start thinking about using it in that way, you'll be much better off. Um, this is not only to separate the plates, but it can be used to keep the plates together. And that's what I'm gonna try to do right now, is I'm not gonna try to separate them so much, but I'm gonna take this nut out, and I'm gonna use it to go back and forth. Open it up, okay, which is about to do right now. And then I'm going to close it. So I use it as a as a tool that really protects. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't need to use this tool on this movement because all I have to do is keep my hand there. <clears throat> okay. And then I can let it up and let it in, you know, whatever, whatever I need to do. All right. I got one to put back in. And um, what I am going to do is I'm going to switch this out. I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to put this. But when you're working on a complicated movement and you're trying to put it back together, 
and you're trying to be careful, this is literally your third hand in the operation. And it can really be, you know, extremely helpful for you. Um, I'm not going to. It, it, the problem is it comes into play is when you're doing this small movement. And so there's not a lot of places to put it. And it's just so bloody easy to to just do, you know, put it back together and not worry about using this plate separator. But if you're working on a, when I'm doing a, a German three train, um, an even but a Jappy, uh, you know, French round barrel, um, man, I'll tell you what. Um, and have I ever used two? No, I've probably never used two of these on one movement because I'm working in a small area and I, you, you got to think of it as working in a small area. Um, and I'm going to just, uh, now I could have put this back together and, uh, uh, by the way, I also polished all the pivots. I do that every time. I, I don't mess around with it. It's pretty stupid not to do it. Um, and uh, these actually, these pivots were actually pretty good. But uh, um, it's just a beautiful, you know, the nice thing about Ansoni is they were a brass company and they really knew how to make brass. So their brass comes out so nice. You know, this is just regular ultrasonic um concentrate cleaner l and r and uh and but look at that see how nice that just that's what i like to see that's what we're going after when you want to see something that's what you want to see really super smooth nice um and i still gotta oil it okay and um so i'm gonna be busy doing that and uh, these uh, come on, baby. Ah, got it. There we go. Come on, Stanley. <laughs> anyway. I was going to find uh, a screwdriver with the right bolt end, but um, this one I can't. So I just like, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'll just do it. Again, this thing about taking your time. If you rush through this right, this one right here, you break one of the, you bend one of these or, oh, oh bait, break, break one. Oof. Now you got a, now you got some work ahead of you, and uh, so we're clear. Um, so I, I'll put this back on here later. But this is the this is the this is the thing you want to see all the time. Really nice, smooth. Um, anyway, <clears throat> you talked me into, I talked myself into doing a hand bushing, came out really nice, um, just to show you that it can be done, and, uh, uh, we're just, I'll oil it up. Uh, we'll put the verge. I'll put the verge back on right now. Um, this one, of all the clocks, normally you can put put this. Um, you can put feet on it, but this one only runs at an angle, and so I'm going to put it back in the case. Uh, I'm very confident that it's going to do a nice job. Uh, I'll oil it, put it back, grease the 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 um, mainspring, and um, uh, and just to let you know how to do that is I 
close it off, get the clamp off it, open it all the way back up and grease it. Um, oil everything, get it ready to go, put it back in the case, and then I'll uh, finish the video up with showing you showing it in the case. And maybe we'll do a little time checks thing and, you know, teach you how to, you know, you can time them pretty easily. This one's pretty pretty well known movement so it should be in the cat you know it should be in the catalog about how many beats per hour and all that and I'll show you about how that goes um anyway uh please subscribe if you like what you see please ring the bell so you'll be uh you'll uh be notified when I put a new video up I will start be doing start doing more videos I'm going to start doing a Oh, I don't know, weekly vlog or uh, maybe uh, every couple days when something interesting comes into the to the shop. Um, you know, I'm going to uh, try to do do an interesting, uh, uh, you know, video on it.